Okay, we should be live. Let's begin. Good evening, everybody. Hope you're doing well. As always, let me know in the chat if audio and video are okay. We'll go through our intros, and then there's plenty, plenty to talk about. Hope you've all had a good weekend as well. Perfect audio and video, says I am Den Puma. I sure hope so. Hello, JR. Nice, looks like we are good to go. Thank you, Michael. I'm, it's going well. How are you? Sushi lover, Sheriff, of course, Richard. Nice, nice. Hope you've all had restful weekends. Not much was missed in terms of price action, but hopefully we've got more to go on this week. So, 7UTC, first things first, thank you to Bybit for sponsoring Technical Roundup, the YouTube channel and the newsletter. Their support means a lot and it means we can provide this content for you indefinitely and for free, so make sure to show them some love via the links in the description below, as well as by liking this video and subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. All those little things really add up and help us out, so thank you very much for those of you who bother. <laughs> um, secondly... The newsletter itself, which is released every Tuesday, also free. Go sign up to that while I'm doing the intro talking stuff. Link in the description or just technicalroundup.com. Go check it out and you can get just the levels, the analysis and the clean stuff there if you prefer it in text format. Adrian says, hey folks, can anybody pass me the risk management video SaaS recommended? Just search crypto cred risk management on Google. If that doesn't come up, I'll be surprised. And also, yes, as some of you have noticed, we've got thumbnails now. Isn't that amazing? The evolution of Technical Roundup. After like three months, we finally have non-offensively bad thumbnails. So that's always enjoyable. So with all that said, let's, let's do Bitcoin first. I'm quite a fan of starting without our levels and doing a quick lower time frame, well, multi-time frame run through. Uh, and then adding our levels for like additional context and to see what's up. So let's kind of do that. Not much has changed quite yet, but as the title suggests, um, the clock is ticking. It's not meant to be melodramatic or anything. It's just when you get bullish high time frame closes off of the monthly, uh, especially in the context that we've had them, market really needs to get moving sooner rather than later, especially this month. The point I'm making specifically, if we take the 10.7k break and retest as such, using this level of resistance, right? Highest close. This is one, two, three, and three and a half months of price action, right? Three and a half months of price action at one level, which hasn't yet resolved in either direction. That, so we've been stuck here. As extreme as the range may seem, if we look at the monthly wicks, right? In terms of all the way up here, sort of 12k or 13k, wherever that was, here just dipping under 10k. Those deviations or highs and lows may seem extreme, but if we're looking at monthly structure and the big theme of the break and retest of the mid 10k area, not much has happened since then, right? So we had, if we evaluate the price action, and again, these are months of trading. We had the close above, that's bullish, retest candle, still bullish, and we retested the level on this wick as well. Then we had the deep retest candle on the last monthly close, this one, whereby we closed right on top of the level, having also spiked previous month's low, okay? So just there, before the past two weeks of price action, you've got the break candle, you've got retest number one, you've got retest number two, plus kind of, I don't want to call it a stop run, but spike of a previous month's lower value area. And now is the third full, sorry, one, two, three. This is the fourth month where I've had three full months above the level and we're halfway through the month after that, uh, still without going anywhere. So that's kind of where the title comes from in terms of the clock is ticking. All the kind of retest scenarios, bullish retest, spike this, spike that, any qualifiers or caveats that you could have asked for or hoped for on this time frame before getting bullish continuation, they've now been satisfied in my view, right? So if this month isn't the one where we trade significantly higher or at least break out of the range we're in, which I'll come to in a moment, uh, then I'll kind of start getting worried purely from a time perspective. Uh, for now, we're fine. So monthly, I, th I think the overwhelming or the relevant narrative is still this monthly break and retest, and we're still stuck in the retesty portion of it. Um, support, 10.7. Resistance, two levels to point out. 
One of them is the kind of obvious next highest close, which aligns with the swing high at 14K. But also there's local resistance in the form of the of this monthly highest close, uh, which is the top of the range, right? It might not look like much, but if you think about it, we rallied and then sold off from this point and we're now retesting it again. So it's still relevant resistance and perhaps more importantly or more convincingly, we've got a weekly level here at 10.7 again. So monthly, still breaking and retesting 10.7. Resistance above market is the 14K handle. Currently resistance on the most recent highest close. Uh, the bearish scenario kind of downtrend or I, I suppose downward break uh, objective, quite a tough one. Uh, for me, if we're using the monthly time frame and being somewhat uh, fair about it, it's going to be have to have to line up close-ish to this um, 8k area. Or if you want to be kind of more conservative, this whole down candle here. Okay, so that's the monthly time frame. I'm going to focus on this break and retest until proven otherwise. We're still at the level, so no need to... Um, go too deep into bearish scenarios yet because there's no reason to but just to be aware uh, the clock is certainly running so to speak martin asks will the breakout be more intense because of the three point months going sideways um i would argue that yes um certainly because if you just look at look at it from a resistance support resistance point of view on the monthly time frame there's really not much going on until 14k um, and it's very likely that when price deals with monthly levels that it spikes significantly above or below them depending on whether they're support or resistance, right? So yeah, the, the short answer to that question, do I expect intensity or perhaps volatility, if I could rephrase, uh, once the this level is resolved, the answer is yes, uh, in my view anyway. Um, so that's the monthly time frame. The weekly is the kind of tricky one, but it's the one where we can come to some sort of view about the range we're in and build a picture based off of that monthly. The weekly level we're currently chopping around is this one here at 11.5. Again, highest close, resistance, 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 overshot here. Should have been a bearish support, sorry, should have been a bullish support resistance flip, specifically on this candle. Instead, we got this big engulfing price action and now rallying and retesting it again. Notably, uh, in my view, at least on the weekly time frame, this level slash this range hasn't broken out yet. Uh, because I don't see this most recent weekly close as a close above resistance, right? For me, this closed at the level. Yes, the current price action is poking above it. But again, it's Monday and I'm not going to chase this, basically. At the moment, um, I use closes on the relevant time frames and sometimes jump down a time frame or two to make like an informed analysis, I suppose. For me, um, the weight goes towards the close which was at resistance and where we are right now early on the week early in the week is above previous week's high okay so still nothing overridingly persuasive to suggest that we've got a weekly breakout on our hands uh, if i'm wrong i'm wrong we'll talk about some daily bullish continuation scenarios to be aware of if the market just starts to melt up but for now purely on a kind of strict time frame approach uh, there's no reason to suggest the range has broken out quite yet uh, and we are at, in an area of resistance. So I said the range hasn't broken out quite yet. So for me, this 11.567 level or area, because I just mentioned the $200 range there, is resistance slash the top of the range. So that begs the question, where is support or the bottom of the range? Uh, as, as we saw in the monthly, there are kind of two levels that make up uh, support, 10.3, 10.7. You know, we just take the middle of that, which is 10.5, or long story short, just take the mid 10k area, right? However defined, maybe we can just even take some liberties and do this, um, and say that we've got high time frame support in basically around 10, 10.5k, and we've got high time frame resistance at around mid 11k. And for now, that's been our range. Okay, if you want to be slightly more surgical with the levels. Uh, I would take this highest close here as the level if I just had to simplify things visually. Uh, and this is where we've been, right? We've overshot through the upper half, found resistance. We've poked below the lower half and into structure here and found support. But that's kind of where the months or certainly the weeks in this case of trading have been. And there's been no decisive breakout quite yet to take us towards our high time frame levels. And as I said, my requirement for that would be a strong weekly close or I suppose if the weekly signal is too lagging, just daily strength through these levels and there's just no evidence of that quite yet. So just to be clear, resistant, we're in a range still and I hope that changes sooner rather than later. Resistance, 11.56, which comes from a weekly level. Support, basically mid 10K, which comes from 
all sorts of monthly time frames, upside and downside targets. We talked about continuation on the monthly time frame. That should take us basically towards this high here, which lands around 14k and is aligned with a monthly level, I think. Uh, and the range break targets. Um, for me, there's a trouble area on this lowest close, as I mentioned, which is around 8800 ish but really if we're going for a monthly target up here it's only fair that we look for monthly support as well should this break down and for me that falls again as mentioned in the intro around this sort of 8k handle give or take right how exactly to delineate, delineate this area doesn't really matter too much as we've discussed previously when you're dealing with monthly levels it's very very common for price to completely overshoot them uh, especially on the first test the reaction make it look like the monthly level is completely irrelevant slash washed uh, and then to for price to eventually settle at the level and for that to be natural right i suppose a straightforward example would be the retest of 10.7 right for lack of a better term let's quickly bring up the clean charts here and let's delineate this monthly support level at 10.7 right and again even when we were up here, I tried to make the point that it's very, very common for price to spike deeply through these levels and initial, and then to somehow settle uh, more or less closer to them. And even if we look at the daily chart, right, 10.7 is support. And look how low we went relative to the level itself, all the way to sub 10k. Okay, so this is why one must be careful when making assessments of high, high time frame levels using significantly lower time frames, because you could just end up thinking that that level is broken, when indeed, if you were just to follow the monthly closes, this level held the whole time, whereas if you were looking for daily or even lower time frame closes, there's a good chance that you were selling up here, which came with uncomfortable bouts of vanishing, rapidly vanishing UPNL, right? So if there's any, ever a good example of giving high time frames a reasonable amount of time to play out before deciding whether the level is broken or not. I think the monthly level at 10.7 is a good example of that because even the daily time frame uh, certainly provided plenty of evidence of what appeared to be a bearish retest but was actually invalid uh, as will often be the case. Again, if anyone cares about my personal approach, if I'm looking at structure on one time frame using the monthly, weekly, daily and then I just kind of group these together as intraday, the most I will typically do is jump one time frame down. Uh, sometimes two if I'm going to the daily, but normally if I'm dealing with monthly structures, I'll get my guidance from the weekly. If I'm dealing with weekly structures, I'll get my guidance from the daily, and for daily I'll look at intraday, right? But I won't go to the extreme unless context really pushes for it, whereby I've got like a weekly level and I'm looking for every single hourly close to decide whether it's going to hold or break, right? That that I think is too, too much of a leap, and I want to see a bit more evidence to arrive at strong views with regard to um, support resistance, etc, etc. Dead Rabbits, nice to see you, mate. Given current macro political economic picture, it wouldn't be a surprise to stay in this range, right? Yeah, I, I, that's a reasonable conclusion. Um, perhaps it, it may be a dream to enter a, a trending environment ahead of all the quote-unquote uncertainty, but uh, I'll trade what's in front of me. I think some events where we anticipated volatility, like the halving, ended up being more or less nothing burgers. Um, and, you know, there's this whole argument of Bitcoin had the best macro backdrop possible, etc. Didn't really do that much um, for when a lot of those pundits were arguing for it to do that. So I think anticipating periods of volatility derived just from real world events, certainly not my expertise, and often I think just ends up being a disappointment. Um, but yeah, as a, as, a, as a scenario or a plausible um, set of events, I wouldn't rule it out either. And if that range theory is going to have any weight, I mean, we're at resistance and, you know, we've got, ve we've got very good levels to contend with, right? Some levels are better than others. For me, this 11.5 weekly uh, is good and this whole 12k area, as I'll come to in a moment, is good. Um, and then the support at mid 10k is also very good, so it's not surprising that the market's kind of balanced more or less in these areas. So yeah, monthly, we talked about break, retest, really time to get going, but at resistance. Weekly, we talked about as well. We transplanted a lot of those monthly levels and basically said resistance up here. So, sorry, I'll just start annotating. Monthly, break and retest, please get moving because it's been three months. Weekly, we have resistance, still kind of acting as resistance, even though the Monday price action is bullish, fine, gonna need to see more than that. And then support, mid 10K, this is our range, 
and we can't seem to find acceptance above it because we get nuked or below it because we get bid up. Okay, if we do 14k upside target and around 8k downside target, but for now, this is where we're at. On the daily time frame, that's where things start to get a little bit interesting, and I can talk slightly more concretely about uh, trade ideas, uh, stuff that I'm looking for, right? I think we're trading within a smaller or even tighter range on the daily time frame, which is delineated for me by this lowest close here and then this highest close here. And, and the way I'm marking out this range, again, you could use these, you know, levels off of these highs, these closes, etc. It doesn't really matter too much. Uh, the reason I've chosen these sp specific lines, as arbitrary as it may seem, and it is to a large extent, is because I'm just interpreting this bit of price action, lowest close, highest close, before the big market structure nuke. Okay, so often, and as we've discussed in previous uh, Monday markets, I will bias my levels towards where shifts in market structure occurred. So kind of highest close before the nuke, lowest close before the nuke, in either direction, up or down. Specifically, um, highest and low and cl lowest close before a significant lower low, right? Or highest and lowest close before a significant uh, higher high. Those are the levels or the areas where I'll give a lot more technical weight. Um, so for me, with where price action is right now, you can see the, the uh, characteristics or the anatomy, I suppose, of that lower range. The lowest close is around 11.3k, uh, temporarily acting as support, or currently acting as support, uh, and the top of the range, uh, closer to 11.9, acting as resistance. For me right now, so the high time frame range we know, but this is kind of where we're at for the time being, and generally on an intraday basis, although I have had not, not had an opportunity to do so yet, I'll look to sell towards the top side of the range with the appropriate setup, and by the bottom side of the range with the same caveat. Um, the only two points to make on this specific daily range. One is that I think selling the upper upper boundary, the top of the range or resistance, whatever you want to call it, at the moment uh, is higher probability than rebuying the bottom of the range, simply because the weekly close was at resistance. So when I get a bearish weekly close, and a daily rally into what I think is an important level of resistance. There's just a lot of confluence there for me to take that setup, if appropriate, etc., etc. Uh, so I'll look to take that. The second point uh, is that with regard to support, because we've built up these lows uh, on the run-up or preceding the run-up that we're seeing right now, uh, there's a good chance that I won't bid something like this blindly. Well, I actually never do, or extremely rarely do I do that. So if I were to get involved on the bottom side of the range, I'd need to see some sort of significant failed breakout attempt that then defines my risk for me before playing it from A to B again. So I think that the more, uh, for me, with where the weekly closes and the daily closes, um, I think the easier trade for my system is to look for some sort of sell at this highest close. Um, I still think range bound to prove otherwise, which means buying support is reasonable, but purely from a trader's perspective or setup point of view, I can foresee that being slightly more difficult uh, to execute. I suppose the final point I want to make about this range um, is that some analysts in a totally reasonable fashion uh, have delineated this whole candle as a kind of supply zone or area of resistance. As always, we end up agreeing on the fact that because it was this candle in this case, or the supply demand version that preceded this nuke in market structure. Um, the whole candle is significant. So for them, this is kind of a swipe or spike into resistance as the market is right now. Uh, that's absolutely fine. Uh, for me personally, it's up here at the extreme that I'd look to do business as opposed to at the candle open. Might seem totally arbitrary, but I need to have some form of consistency in my setup. I can't arbitrarily choose to use the whole candle versus the open and close just because I really want to get in a trade. I think that is uh, an act of self-sabotage. So I'll either wait for my level to get tagged or do nothing, right? So yeah, I hope that makes sense anatomically. Lowest close, bottom of the range, highest close, top of the range. We're currently moved off, moved off from the bottom, moving towards the top, but arguably already at resistance if you interpret price differently. I suppose. Okay, so where does that leave us in terms of setups? Yes, there are the range bound setups to be discussed. Um, but what's the bullish continuation one if the market just starts to melt up? Uh, and as I alluded to, I think actually we spoke in some detail in previous Monday session, 
My personal view is that it's important for a system to cater for continuation entries as well as pullback entries, simply simply because of how crypto works, right? Um, you'll get like really shallow pullbacks and a strong trend, strong trend, strong strong trend. You know, it'll just go absolutely mental. Meanwhile, you're waiting for the high time frame pullback, let's say at this level, and then you miss out on this entire leg of like reasonably straightforward continuation trades, kind of here, 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 simply because your system just doesn't cater for them whatsoever. And then eventually, you know, it could be months, could be weeks down the line, you get your dip into the level where you get your first trade, okay? But by that point, even if you win or it's a profitable trade, etc., you've missed out on so many other opportunities. Uh, and those guys, even if they're wrong on this final drop and ended up longing around here, uh, the returns they've made, just trend following, um, and the amount of trades and information that's generated, etc. Um, there's really not much missed by buying the top once in a trend when you've milked it for all it's worth on the way up. Okay, so I'm not disparaging the trading system, which basically says, okay, well, this break is significant. Oops, let's say this break is significant. Therefore, I'll look to buy support and then, you know, you get your rounded retest eventually. And that's where you trade. I think that's totally reasonable. Um, and my system used to be built exactly like this. I would simply in every single instance without exception, wait for the high time frame pullback. But I eventually found that even getting involved in, you know, one, two, just a handful of these continuation trades along the way uh, in the smaller trend paid really well. And I was more in tune with the market for when this pullback actually came. So that's that's my kind of two cents or two pence uh, on that topic. Following on from that, what is the continuation entry, at least on the daily time frame? Uh, for this market, well, supply, demand, support, resistance, range, order block, market auction theory, whatever. Um, I think there is either way a lot of levels will land on this highest close here because um, it was simply the top point again before the market structure nuke. We always like to look at what preceded significant shifts in high time frame market structure to get a sense of for where the important levels are. So with that in mind, this is supposed to be strong resistance. Lo and behold, the continuation setup would be a close through this level and then either a some sort of pullback to structure to take price higher or what seems to be more likely if we actually squeeze through this area, a break and then some sort of lower time frame consolidation into continuation. Okay, and as discussed, the targets for this type of setup, both of which to an extent are contingent on a close above the highest close. Okay, uh, what are the objectives for that move? Swing high as objective number one, but really I don't expect much resistance there. I think resistance is up here, and if that gets blown through, there's really not much there, maybe apart from um, seller's stop orders. <laughs> um, and then I'd expect continuation towards the 14K monthly target, because that kind of volatility expansion, I could see us traveling very quickly, and it would, if, if anything, it would reinforce the argument of finally we're getting moving on this godforsaken monthly time frame. Okay, so that's the... Uh, preferred bullish continuation setup. I'm going to be extra careful in this case and wait for quote unquote confirmation, which for me simply means a daily close above the level because my last trade at 11 920s was a long, which was somewhere around here. Uh, I bought basically the breakout before the close, thinking that we were about to melt up, right? The reasoning was something. I think, I mean, look, for me, the market was like somewhere above here, it didn't look bearish. Uh, intraday patterns were fine, blah, blah, blah. Essentially FOMO longed uh, what seemed like a support resistance flip on lower time frames, aiming for this and 14K. Ended up not going terribly well, resulting in a lost trade. So just for that reason, simply because I've done, basically taken that exact trade uh, at this level and lost, I'll be extra careful this time uh, and wait for something uh, a bit clearer than my uh, chasing entry to be generous to myself last time. Okay, uh, in terms of a pullback entries, that's the kind of momentum continuation one. A uh, rabbit says I'm a terrible low time frame breakout trader. Same, it just doesn't work. It just doesn't work. Um, but, but okay, answered that good. So that's the kind of continuation entry through 12k. Uh, I doubt it'll be easy. There's a good chance if this resistance fails, uh, it'll be some sort of Chad candle that'll have to chase. Uh, that's the kind of the price to pay. So whatever. In terms of pullback entries. Slightly harder, right? Because there are two levels to essentially contend with. One is the newsletter level, if you will, uh, the support resistance flip closer to 11k, right? Which is the bottom of the previous range. 
you know, this consolidation, you've got some lows coming in, specifically resistance here, closed above it, and then shot off from that point. So support at the red box. But for me, there's just simply more technical significance at the 10.7 level, where we've got the, uh, the quarterly level, but also the monthly open. Okay, um, sometimes you'll be faced with these scenarios where you've got two pretty good levels that are close to each other. So in this case, we've got the support resistance flip higher up at 11k, and then the deeper pullback level lower down at 10.7k. $300 in this case isn't a crazy disparity, but for me, when I most given I tr mostly trade with just one order uh, or one kind of execution or entry technique. I'm not in a position where I just bracket or split up my orders in a way to get fills at multiple levels. Uh, certainly not on a high time frame chart. On an intraday chart, it's possible. Uh, on high time frames, I really need to make a choice. Purely from experience, whenever I get involved in a level um, which is closer to the market, but not as good as the level further from the market, I tend to price just tends to stop me out or make me really uncomfortable to do something like this, right? It would come back to the level that's okay, and I get a fill, and I'll get a bounce, and I'm like, oh, that's great. Thank God I got involved with the red box, not with the purple box. And then inevitably, it'll nuke down and then spring from the level that I either didn't wait for or had to take a lot of heat uh, to stay in, right? Uh, and in terms of even just risk definition and stop placement, at least in the high time frame chart, uh, there's a good chance, unless you you get something really tight in the 11K area, that you'll be stopping out into an area of monthly support if your stop placement isn't terribly prudent or if price just wicks uh, and violates 11k too quite significantly. So that's always something to be wary of as well. So for those reasons and purely just based on experience, uh, do I think it's plausible that a pullback reversal does so at 11k? Absolutely. Uh, will I be on board that type of move? Uh, if it does, unlikely, because for me, the pullback scenario is at this level, okay? So the bullish Bitcoin stuff, momentum continuation through 12K, deeper pullback uh, buy and pray that it's a higher low is at 10.7. Uh, in the interim, resistance at 12K, and we know there's some arguments for being at resistance already, top of the range, and then bottom of the range, 11.4. So just to be clear, or just to delete these levels for a sec, for me, the higher conviction trades are the following. Something like this. Oops. Something like this for a long, right? That'd be my higher conviction momentum continuation long. A dip into... 10.7 for a higher conviction pullback long. Okay, these are the two kind of big ones if this market's going to be bullish and head north, the ones I'm looking for. I mean, I don't know if people screenshot this stuff, but just as a going to let that sink in. In terms of where the market is right now, right now, we've got, and for to inform lower time frame trading, I've got support at around 11.3k and resistance around 11.9k. And this is and this is to be traded as a range until proven otherwise. Does that make a oh, bearish scenario? Um, it's pretty tough to be completely honest with you. I mean bearish scenario, it depends on the time frame. On the intraday time frame, because we're, because I mentioned we're in a range for me and 12k is just a really good level of resistance, there's a good chance that at least on an intraday basis, I punt something that spikes through 12k if I get something risk defined and look to take that into eh, kind of the breakout level. So I suppose the, the intraday bearish scenario would be something like this, right? Into the level and then into trouble area. Very much hit and run kind of A to B. Fresh test of a high time frame level into FTA at a high time frame level. Again, it's not clear whether 11.4 on the weekly time frame is going to act as support. The weekly close is kind of shitty, so that makes me cautious. And the reason to be bearish at A, as I mentioned, we have a weekly close, which respect the resistance, and then a daily rally into resistance above the weekly level itself. So if there's any candidate for a weekly time frame wick, it would be around here. So at least on an intraday basis, the kind of FTA to, sorry, level to, int to lower time frame FTA trade, um, that would be it for me, 11.9 to 11.4. Uh, other bearish scenarios, um, not terribly sure, mate. I, I would love to sit here and just say 
the, in terms of setups, that we've got support at the bottom of the daily range, right? 11.3, and that something like this would be a valid bearish setup. Like in terms of squiggly lines, TA, crypto, YouTube crap, I think that's fine. But the chances of this working out cleanly, I just don't think are particularly high, which is why I'm not entertaining it that much. Uh, if, if it sets up, trust me, I'll be the first on board. But these types of set the wick and then catch the breakdown scenarios, I'm just so awful at catching those that I'd rather just sell the rally and see if I can get anything past FTA rather than pretend I'll be able to trade this kind of market structure break slash reversal, okay? Um, which is why I always start off with what are my higher conviction uh, setups and then if, if a setup doesn't feature then there's a good chance experientially that I'm not going to do, do, do much good to myself trading it. Cornhelio says, why would you buy 10.7 below, below 11k back to the old range is bearish? It depends on your time frame. Um, for me personally, there's just a lot going on at 10.7 with the monthly open and the quarterly level there as well. And it was also untested on this breakaway, right? Or at least there's no rounded retest of the level. Essentially, you had resistance, resistance, and the market just flew away from it. So even if it sets up some sort of intraday bounce right, comes back, gives me a bounce even into old lows, something like this, that in itself is enough for a trade, right, A to B, uh, but I wouldn't ignore 10.7 completely, I agree, it might not look too great on the daily time frame if we make our way all the way back there, and it would look like um, we've been rejected from weekly resistance, but just as a reminder, the weekly range that we're in, we've got resistance at 11.5, right, resistance, 11.5, support essentially mid 10k right we can take some liberties and draw out this consolidation doesn't really matter too much so if we get rejected from the weekly level uh what you're essentially asking me about buying 10.7 is you're saying if the range high holds why would you buy the range low and the answer is because if the range high holds that's evidence of continuation in ranging conditions so if the top of the range holds until the range breaks, buying the bottom of the range is a good trade until proven otherwise, right? That, that's my answer there. Uh, and again, my system is not such that I just leave limit orders in the market and hope and pray. Um, certainly when the market's far away from the level, it's not where I leave limit orders. It could be the case that I see something on the daily time frame if we come back here. And then if we push away slightly, I can leave a limit order again, rare. Um, the best I can do is to out delineate and mark out these levels, come up with rough trading plans or things that I think are higher probability or higher conviction for me personally than others, and then give updates or discuss as they develop, right? Um, so when I say 10.7 for an intraday bounce, that doesn't mean I've just got orders plastered everywhere here trying to catch something. Uh, and just as a quick reminder in terms of my setup, like as in my system, not set up, like why are you bullish, why are you bearish, this, that, etc. It always depends on what I'm trading, right? The two primarily, primary kind of, I suppose the anatomy of how I trade, every setup is premised, with some exceptions, but for the most part, is premised on a high time frame level. For shorter term trading, right, shorter term trading, I'll take it to a low time frame uh, trouble area, okay? And then for the longer term or swing trading, I'll take it from a high time frame. Oops, high time frame, first trouble area. Okay, so when I say look for a bounce or bullish, bearish, etc., um, there's no guarantee that I'm going to be holding it for like a mega swing up or down. It could be literally a bounce play, right? If anything, more often than not, if we're dealing with fresh levels, like up here at 12k, or I suppose in, 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 in the sense of support, untested levels at 10.7 down here, the first trade that I normally take is the short term trade from high time frame levels, in this case here and here, to a lower time frame first trouble area. Okay, so these aren't high conviction crazy bets. Um, they're essentially, all I need is a reaction, something good enough to take me from point A to B, and then I reassess to see if the first one, the low time frame bounce morphs into a high time frame swing okay and there's no guarantee of that um on an intraday basis on intraday basis i think 
two points are relevant. And again, this isn't where I'm necessarily... Again, the convictions tend to go slightly lower uh, the higher the time frames go, if that means anything. But if, if you're really short-term trading this, for me, these consolidations, which occur after what appear to be breaks of high time frame levels, right? So 11 point, the weekly level, currently above it on this break. And then we consolidated and broke out again. And the consolidation itself ends up being a useful support resistance structure, right? As we've discussed, impulse, consolidate, impulse. The consolidation itself is a significant support resistance structure, especially when these impulsive legs form at or through high time frame levels. And we have that extra confluence kind of stuff um, given that this leg came from, right? This leg came from the break of a high time frame level. So I think to be bearish this on the lower time frame basis, and again, I don't want to dedicate too much time to this given this is a weekly show, right? So I kind of want to stick to the high time frame stuff. Uh, but any, I think any acceptance below the lower boundary here, which doesn't turn into something like this, so an actual break, there's a good chance we come back and revisit the weekly level, maybe even set the weekly high. Okay, uh, for short term trading, as long as the consolidation acts as support, that's fine. Generally, given the weekly close at resistance held, right? Weekly close at resistance, I don't want to see price come back and retest this. For me, that wouldn't be a bullish retest, purely based on context, right? So if we've got a bullish weekly close, okay, and we're now above the weekly level, if we were to dip back into here, I would generally be positive and look to be a buyer of this level. Right, that that's just how it works for me, because that means weekly bullet weekly is bullish, fantastic, and I get to buy weekly support. I'm in there all day, especially if I get a bit of a discount by buying some lows, fantastic, even better entry, right? But purely because of context, whereby we have weekly resistance, and so this level is still intact on a high time frame basis. If we come back here, the context is then different, and I'd be more open to interpreting the price action above it as the weekly wick before then returning to the range. So that bit of context, at least for me, makes a difference. Does that make sense to anyone else, or is that just me? Intramoto says it makes sense. That's great. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, um, I think that's all I've got for Bitcoin for now. Um, don't want to repeat myself too much. So I think that's straightforward. So that's where the hopefully the title is now justified. Um, the clock is ticking because we've had all the break and retests on the monthly. The weekly time frame still range bound. Daily time frame within an old range. But really, if we're going to get a bullish month, it's time to get out of this hell that we're in. And if we get a if weekly resistance ends up holding, then, you know, we have to start asking questions about the higher time frame charts, unfortunately. Um, and the reason I'm not a huge fan of this 11.4 thing generally is because I just tend to find I trade better when the intraday price action is slightly better um, at these high time frame levels. Like a few close above and then close below and find a support resistance, etc. Those are fine. But when I see these continuous violations of the level, um, I, I tend not to put too much weight on the retest or just trading it when it comes back there. I'd rather do business clearly above or below market in those cases. Hope that made sense. Like the video if it did, and I'll try to do some shorter term stuff as well on Twitter, etc., etc. Um, but yeah, that, hopefully that's Bitcoin. At the very least, if you're going to remember anything, um, the, the higher conviction setups, I think, are useful everything else. If you're happy to trade back within this range, uh, be my guest. Um, but perhaps it won't be as easy as these two. <laughs> ETH. ETH, ETH, ETH. So we'll do something similar but slightly quicker. And I really think one time frame matters for ETH more than anything else. And unfortunately, it's the monthly. And I say unfortunately because the monthly time frame for me still looks like a dog's dinner, which isn't a good thing, right? Specifically, we have the best level on this chart, and it's not just on the monthly, also on the weekly, this area, its significance is kind of hard to overstate. And what price action do we have? We had a close above the level, which is typically bullish, and then a close below it in a way that also spiked previous month's high. So anyone who was essentially breakout buying on lower time frames or even the monthly time frame ended up eating a plate and then got squeezed 
all the way down here, right? But more importantly, the price action at the level itself. Close above, close below, retesting those resistance. This is just not a good chart on the monthly time frame. It's very hard to um, describe it in any other way. I would love to see some sort of invalidation of that or reclaim or anything else. Um, but for now, with the available evidence, it just looks rough, okay? And support on this time frame is here on, at the breakout level at 300. So monthly levels for ETH, I just have the following. Maybe four if you want to do the middle of this range here as well. There you go. So what are these levels? 300, which is support, which is the monthly breakout level. 400. So let's do this. Hold on. 300, support, monthly breakout. 400, resistance, above which we had a failed breakout. Mid 500s is the midpoint of this previous range. So you've got lowest close, highest close. This is the range before the bear market. Okay, so the midpoint is just a useful um, guiding light, I suppose, when we're dealing with really high time frame ranges. So that's somewhat relevant. You can even have that in brackets. And then the top of the range, I think this is around 670, 680 um, resistance. So with that context in mind, what have we done? We closed back within the old range. That's every excuse to be bullish and trade towards the midpoint and then the range high, but the market had none of it. We had a big wipe, closed below the level, and it's now acting as resistance once again. Okay, uh, with support at 300. This is what makes being bullish Bitcoin difficult because it's very unlikely that, in my view at least, that Bitcoin and ETH decorrelate in such a way that Bitcoin just flies to 14k and looks super bullish and then ETH just nukes to 300 and looks super bearish. That to me is just a very unlikely set of events and ETH BTC would look absolutely, you know, it, it, it's hard to even fathom what that would look like. These tend to move in lockstep, right? Bitcoin is still kind of the reserve value for crypto. We, we have been getting more Ethereum-led rallies recently. Certainly the DeFi rally was... Uh, Ethereum driven, no surprise. So I, I'm still, I still need to be persuaded that a decoupling to that point can make sense, whereby Bitcoin just flies and ETH just dies. I find that unlikely. If anything, the question we have to answer is which is uh, lagging and which is leading, if any. I think if crypto is going to be bullish, uh, ETH needs to fix this chart, for lack of a better term. Um, and the bearish case for crypto would essentially be we live by Ethereum and then we die by Ethereum. Um, it remains to be seen which of these narratives uh, end up playing out and nothing terribly clear uh, at the moment. Okay, but from a high time frame point of view, this that's kind of the line in the sand, quite literally, for me. Looking at it on the weekly time frame, we can get rid of some of this stuff. Um, and view it in similar terms. Okay, this is kind of the monthly area we're dealing with. So when I said that on the monthly time frame, it's a close above, close below, or the failed breakout, etc., etc., this is that price action here. Okay, when I said every excuse to be bullish, I mean, look at these candles before the nuke, right here. Uh, this is might have been probably one of the cleaner support resistance flips you have. Retesting the level all day, you know, and then in terms of resistance, really not much going on. Until, I mean, this is kind of hindsight resistance. I, I don't think this caused this. I think it's the failed breakout at the high time frame level that's more significant. There's no way to prove that. It's just how I conceptualize things. Not exactly teaching market, mar market microstructure here. Um, so to be bullish... You can see right now with where the market is, right? This line, uh, we're retesting resistance. I think to be bullish this, any kind of flip at 380, 390, or even if you want to be conservative, um, a break of the consolidation, which preceded the nuke. So something like this, the upper boundary specifically. Uh, I think that's absolutely fine. And although it may seem like you're kind of chasing or FOMOing or doing whatever here, uh, and I was very lucky to exit along so i basically bought that support resistance flip because i thought it was a fantastic trade and it looked fantastic uh, but i was lucky to exit the dead cap bounce at like 378 380 you can go back and check the twitter or whatever i basically ended up puking um before the massive bearish retest leg played out but it begs the question at what point are you just kind of fomo buying or chasing versus entering just 
on momentum or when you get quote unquote confirmation. Uh, for me, it really depends on what the chart actually looks like, right? So let's say you've got, um, one second. I don't want to get too educational, right? But let's say you've got this sort of uh, range to deal with, okay? And this is kind of your high time frame trouble area up here. There's no way you ignore that. Uh, and let's say the market is balanced to some extent and it's trading closer to the middle of this range that we're in, okay? And then you get a breakout which closes above this level. Now, and you know, so this is the close here, let's say. You get a bit of a pop. So here. So I think something to always consider is how much space do I realistically have until the next trouble area? So what you'll often see like on YouTube crypto analysis is that you'll have like a big uh, level for example, and someone says, oh, this is really big support, etc., etc., uh, And then the market will just completely nuke it and close all the way down there. Even on the lower time frames, right? Just completely, the level gets obliterated. And then there's analysts or entertainers, I suppose, will come back and say, oh, look, as we said in last week's live stream, this is such a key level of support. When it was broken, the market went way lower. But I mean, how useful is that if from a trading point of view or from a practical point of view, if... There's just no chance to get involved and there's basically nothing left to capture uh, on this leg here, right? It, just, it doesn't make any sense. The, the same consideration works in reverse. If if you're, you know, this is like a, where the market's balanced, you've got a high time frame trouble area here, and the market breaks out and closes reasonably close to what you perceive to be a high time frame trouble area, uh, it's kind of almost a risk reward assessment of how much is there left to capture. So typically, if you're trading narrower ranges or lower time frames, the requirement for your entry to be precise is higher. Okay, so if less space to oops to capture until FTA, etc. Requirement for precision is higher, purely from a you know to make the trade or the payoff of the trade worth it. Okay, and then. Conversely, if more space to capture, oops, until FTA, etc., the opposite is true, right? Requirement for precision is lower. So hopefully that makes some sort of sense. So when we're talking about ETH, right, if I'm saying that 400, you know, if the market goes above 400, let's say above 400, equals and then the next high time frame area is like 550 okay sorry this should be a bloody here we go right if we say if i say we go above 400 we go to 550 in percentage terms i've got all you've got so much to capture un until we get to the next high time frame trouble area it doesn't really matter whether my entry ends up being at 410 420 you know 430 435 like it really doesn't matter simply because we're dealing with such high swings and that's from in my view one of the pros of trading high time frames your the entry requirement or the precision the requirement for your entry to be precise is much lower because if your idea is correct you're playing to capture much bigger moves and even if they end up being fractionally correct and price goes to like let's say 530 instead of 550 um, these entries are still just as good albeit with slightly lower payoff okay However, let's say the range we're dealing with is an hourly one, and I'm saying if we go, you know, what am I going to do? Yeah, if we go above 400, same thing, right? If we're greater than 400, and then I'm trading like the top of the range, we go to 430, okay? Which is, let's say, resistance. Like, this ends up being support, and then this ends up being resistance. Forget what the actual chart looks like. Let's say this is it, right? And you can conceptualize this in percentage terms, whatever, a significantly smaller move. It's the scale that matters, uh, not the move per se. So is an entry in this case at 405 to 430, or even again, because you're not going to catch the top, let's say falls short of your actual first trouble area, 425, that's still a reasonable trade. So catching the breakout or the retest at 405 is still fine. Okay. However, what about if it, the market breaks out straight away to 420? Is that worth it, right? 420 to 430? At that point, you've essentially missed out most of the move um, through no fault of your own. Like sometimes you just get these Chad candles and I mean, that's it. You've kind of missed the trade. And it doesn't make sense, no matter how close you are to target, uh, to take that trade because there's nothing left to capture. Even from a risk reward point of view, you'll be like 0.4R, okay? So even winning the trade um, won't pay for itself 
in any way, and down the line, you need to have an absurdly high win rate to justify that type of trading, okay? So this is like an important thing to consider whenever I'm giving or suggesting trading plans of my own or discussing high time frames, etc. The benefit of trading these high time frame levels uh, is that your requirement for precision is lower if your targets are anywhere near correct, okay? So it's more about recognizing what's going on and acting on it as opposed to acting on it perfectly. If you're trading lower time frames, ranges, narrower bands of price, etc., you get rewarded by the fact you don't have to wait three bloody months for the chart to do anything. So that's a plus, right? You get more feedback, more trades, um, a quicker resolution to your trades, etc. However, a lot of the time, the price you have to pay for that is you have to be more surgical in your entries because by definition, you're trying to capture slow, uh, smaller moves. Does that make sense to anyone at all? Hi, George. How are you doing, mate? Yeah, I suppose the useful thing there is for high time frame, whatever, swing trading, recognizing what's going on is, is really important. Uh, and the precision of your entry is slightly less important, or in my view, significantly less important. Like, I remember specifically when Bitcoin broke, of, uh, broke above 6K, right? This big support resistance flip here. During this week, when the market was melting up, on this candle here, I was straight up in disbelief, right? Because my view was, and th there are really cringy, bad audio YouTube videos on my channel which go back to this, and ledger status podcasts, etc. But when this break happened, my view was, well, instead of trying to buy below 6K, why don't you buy back above 6K? And if that happens, you can go back and find the video. My view was that we'll essentially go for each swing high, something like this, okay? They forget but above 6K, we're just going to melt up because there are going to be so many whatever shorts and new interests, etc. It's going to take us there. Like analysis, absolutely easy and spot on. However, I remember distinctly talking to Hisaka via DMs when we were at like 6400, 6600. And I'm just sat there in full disbelief. Like, do I sell the next leg? Like, what's going on? This doesn't look real, you know? And eventually, I think Donald was the one that pulled me out of my disbelief. I ended up catching a non-trivial portion of that move. Um, but it goes to serve the point that recognizing the shift in high time frame conditions uh, and recognizing the amount of upside that remains to be or downside that remains to be captured if your high time frame shift uh, is correct is in my view just as important as getting a nice entry on the idea okay so context really matters if you've got a lot to capture less precision if you've got less to capture more precision so yeah with bitcoin we've talked about eth Look, simply, the monthly chart looks absolutely awful. Um, could it be the case that we live by, you know, Ethereum leads us up and leads us down as well? Certainly could be. But either way, um, it needs to be fixed for me to be remotely bullish or interested. Um, this instrument specifically, because for goodness sake, right? You give me a fake out on the monthly time frame at the best level on the chart itself. Uh, and then you're going to try to get me to buy the retest of that same level after it's faked out. I, I just can't bring myself to do that. Okay. Any flip, blah, 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 confirmation, I'll happily pay a premium uh, to get on board that move, albeit late. And all the Chad longers at 390, 400 can flex their entries when I end up buying a local top. But because my next trouble area is really at like 700 or mid 500s, I don't mind paying up in the 400s for a safer entry. I'd rather buy a late break of resistance rather than buy the bearish retest hoping it fails. I think that makes sense in English. Maybe it doesn't. Uh, five in the comments completely nails a, uh, a point there. When in a trade and high time frames has a lot of room to go, it still feels scary if low time frame is running out of steam. Oh, absolutely, mate. I totally agree. And that's one of the main difficulties in trading those high time frame breaks, flips, whatever. Because we're so fixated on looking at lower time frame charts, uh, and given we're at our screens all bloody day, contextualizing moves by like hourly candles, four hour candles, etc. Um, it, it's hard to not give weight to those lower time frame exhaustion candles, scary looking candles, pullbacks when you've got a high time frame um, thesis. But hey, it's all part of the game, isn't it? On some final notes, we've talked Bitcoin, talked ETHUSD. You can go back and rewatch 
Uh, ETH BTC is just really anemic for me. Uh, it's starting to look kind of weak. Um, it's hard to have strong views on this, given that no levels have rolled over yet. It obviously outperformed when DeFi was a thing and the Ethereum-led rally, but it's just literally just gone sideways since then, uh, and it's been respecting levels for the most part. Resistance at 36s, support at 31s, and I've got a bit of a uh, shorter-term resistance at 33 and 34, which is currently intact. It's, it's, it's difficult to articulate like kind of a, a, a full-fledged narrative for what would lead ETHBTC up or down. Like it could be the case that the Bitcoin higher time frame um, chart plays out and we see a rotation into Bitcoin, which would be bearish for ETHBTC, right? Or some sort of DeFi shift towards WBTC and the Bitcoin ecosystem being bullish BTC USD and bearish ETH USD, which would mean a bearish uh, ETHBTC, right? Um, so yeah, I, I don't know, quite simply. I don't know. I'll let, my, I'll let the technicals guide this one. It's not a pair I actually trade that much. Use it more as a kind of index and a risk proxy for alts to some extent. Not even as much anymore, given the Luke Martin channel from 2017, 2018 is over. But yeah, no, really no strong views on ETH BTC. If you want to, if you want to talk about or read about some of the potential, um, narratives that might come into play, subscribe to the newsletter. But generally, as we wrote there, I think the, the utility of ETHBTC now is significantly lower than it was in the past. So I'll just mostly be looking at the USD pairs uh, for guidance. Okay, uh, with Link USD, um, I don't know where the hell my levels have gone. Actually, I have no idea. Um, oh yeah, I remember. I think Link is generally an instrument that you want to be long because of because it's been in a secular uptrend since forever, okay? Um, but for me, it's not the type of instrument right now where I want to be aggressively buying dips. In a very similar vein, with where, the, with where the market is right now, kind of a macro uncertain point of view and ETH looking like a dog's dinner, I'd much rather pay for strength and then let the Link Marines take over rather than buy dips and maybe sit on them for potentially weeks, okay? So in this case, with the USDT pair, um, it's really kind, technically, to give us a nice support resistance structure around the $13.5 mark, okay? Which is an old trading range, kind of like so. Yeah, it's kind of good enough, okay? So for me, uh, yeah, it's dipping into structure, the levels to work with, etc., etc. Um, currently stuck at resistance and you can just see from twitter that the uh, a lot of hype around link has been reduced and you know whatever it doesn't matter so for me given how e dog shit eth looks and my general uncertainty about macro direction etc i want to pay for strength so that would mean something like this getting long on a reclaim into the old range above 13 and a half or if you won't if you want quote unquote confirmation uh longing slash adding through 17 the support resistance flip here and then let the link marines take over for price discovery uh, that for me is the higher momentum faster moving higher probability trade the reclaim of the old range or the reclaim and or the reclaim of the pre all-time high range that kind of stuff is totally fine um and you know let momentum do the trick there but while we're below this level at 13 and a half and just you know these dips forming a range into resistance not exactly my uh preferred way to trade this instrument again for lower time frames still liquid still trade pretty well technically uh be my guest but you know if i'm going to allocate bits of my portfolio towards stuff certainly altcoins i want to be in and out of the things for the move quickly as opposed to buy dips and hope it plays out over you know weeks or whatever it may be in terms of the short term range probably resistance up here at 11 and then support down here at 9.7 so this seems more plausible while the market decides, with the easier trades being here and here. Okay. With regard to Link BTC, slightly clear in terms of levels. It also looks a lot like the USD chart, right? Uh, that's no secret. Um, so I can literally make this. Oh, actually, I want to make two points. So the first one mirrors the Link USD arguments, whereby. We're just chopping between high time frame levels at the moment, so that's fine. Let it do its thing. For the faster moving continuation plays, same thing. Uh, equivalent technical structures in the BTC pair uh, as the USD pair, so that just makes sense to me. 
in terms of high time frame shifts, if we remove log for a second, this chart looks like significantly scarier to some extent, because while this is purely in terms of technicals, a pullback to support, and again, this may look like a big box, but it's really the upper and lower boundaries that matter. I feel like I'm channeling my inner Donald here, but we've had like the first real pullback and link, uh, and nothing has really happened since then. Okay, we even tested the lower boundary, and then we've been range bound ever since and stuck at the previous highest close. So, for me to get you know interested in link or where to look for bullish price action, whatever, even on shorter time frames, kind of two levels come to mind. So yeah, all the setups we talked about for the USD pair and the BTC pair, those daily flips, those are valid as ever. But if we're talking about high time frame trend, the two areas which make sense is the extreme of support, right? Close to 74s. Because again, the level is comprised of highest close and lowest close, the range which preceded the all-time high run. We're now testing uh, the top of it and really not doing much. So if price falls back within it, I think we get to the range low and this is kind of a, a real spot for perhaps juicier or more volatile bounce. And in terms of betting on the trend for Link, uh, I think there's an equivalent USD level here. Um, but really the 50 handle, this macro kind of breakout that remained untested. We've got a Link video up on the channel which talks about how previous support resistance flips have for the most part been retested. Uh, and ever since this leg here, uh, we haven't had similar type of structure in terms of horizontal levels. So... X marks the spot, extreme support for any sort of bounce at 74s. If not that, then we have to deal with the macro breakout range at 50s and 34s. Again, not the whole box, just the upper and lower boundary. But for now, um, X marks the spot with where I think levels are important, where I want to do business on a high time frame and bet on the trend sort of thing. For now, we bounced for essentially a month off the same support, done nothing from it. Um, so a droop lower towards these would be much appreciated. Okay, uh, as always, high time frame levels work really well for intraday trading on Link. That's one of its strong points. So if you want to entertain yourself uh, in the interim, be my guest. But the higher probability stuff is stuff like this for me. Or something big. Okay. Wi-Fi USD, not looking too great uh, at the moment. Oops. And the BTC pair looks kind of the same. Um, we're now retesting kind of the only support structure uh, this thing has got for the most part. Leave a like on the video if you're enjoying these requests. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge, please help. Um, and it comes back to the structure we talked about with regard to impulse, consolidate, impulse, etc. And the consolidation being support resistance. We're now doing that just... Not much is happening. Um, so that's that same consolidation. We had a chance to bounce from the upper boundary, having tested the lower boundary, but now it's kind of back below it, acting as resistance. At the very least, these bounces have just been rejected at FTA and not much else happening. So kind of like Link, it's a case where, yes, we are bouncing from the upper boundary. Cool, but that's not really the place, in my view, for the high conviction uh, bets. So to be long or bullish YFI, it would even need to be at the extreme of support closer to 12,380. Or, again, paying up for strength, any sort of reclaim through 22s, ideally through this structure here, right? Something like this, right? Because by that point, we're then, we're then, you know, reclaimed in all trading range, we have good targets to work with. Um, generally, if we go from one side, we'll look to trade towards the other side. So where we are right now is just generally unattractive. It, it, again, analogous with Link, whereby yes, good, high time frame support, etc, etc. Reaction's been shit. And when there are much clearer levels to do business, specifically the momentum continuation one above market and the extreme support below market, I'm not going to be hugely interested in interim levels. I can remember so many trades that I've lost or just labored over where... I get involved in a level that is just not one of the good ones on the chart, but kind of good, just about good enough to justify a trade, right? And then I just sit in it and, it, you know, it's a laborious process, ends up being a scratch, a stop out, whatever. And then the easy trade 
comes from um, the levels that you know you should be trading at, right? So that's something I've learned the hard way and continue to learn, which is why I've got no issue uh, waiting for the better levels as opposed to trading at good enough levels, right? That's something I suppose to ask yourself as a trade heuristic. Like, is this level good enough? Like, am I using this level because I think that there's going to be really good trade coming from it? Or is it just good enough to justify a punt and feel less guilty than usual about it? A lot of my trades in the past have fallen into the second category. Like, I know it's not one of the best levels on the chart. It doesn't really matter too much. There's much better levels above and below market, but hey, it's something and I can kind of justify it to myself, so I'm going to take it. Uh, if a lot of your setups come at those types of mediocre structures, um, perhaps reconsider. Especially because there's like a mental capital element to it all, right? Like, if you if there's like a fantastic resistance here, and then there's your there's a resistance level here, and you're selling this level with your stop somewhere in the middle, and then this is like the really good level. Let's say, you know, you get a rally into your level, it reacts a little bit, your UPNL flashes green, you're then managing it, thinking where to move your stop, etc. And then it rallies against you and just takes out your stop completely, right? Or just invalidates your idea. You probably don't have much room to trail there. So, you know, you get your reaction, short hit of dopamine, and then you get stopped out. Purely in terms of the price or technicals or charting, whatever, uh, you should be selling then the best level on the chart. But there is a kind of mental uh, capital element to it, whereby if you just ate shit on this leg here and then the market continues going higher, are you really going to be in the best mental state slash position to then resell that same market that just stopped you out at the level that you should have stopped and sold in the first place? Like, it sounds easy when you're planning it and when you're doing analysis, but in reality, there is a sort of uh, mental fortitude, element, resiliency, whatever you want to call it, to all of this. Uh, and trust me, to this day, it's actually don't trust me, but believe me or try to believe me when I say uh, that it's not as easy as it may seem getting on the same side of a market, not far from where you just got stopped out um, in the, often a very similar time span. So to avoid that conundrum, I'd much rather miss the trade. Like if it does this instead of hitting the level and doing that, I'd much rather miss the trade at the mediocre level, but keep myself fresh and ready to trade with bigger bets, right? And full mental resilience at the level that's actually worth trading, okay? As opposed to convincing myself, yeah, I'll sell here because it's good enough, but if it goes here, I'll definitely sell it again. You probably won't. Uh, and if you do, there's a good chance that you mismanage it or mess it up in some other way simply because you're beaten up from the first stop out. That might make sense to someone. You need a lot of patience and on sideline to wait that trade could never come. Yeah, I agree, Cornelio, you do. You do. And also, it's not only that that's difficult, that the trade might, may, never, may never come, but it's also the fact that you need to be sh damn sure that you're there to execute um, when it does come. Which is arguably even harder. Donald is really good at that. Eon's better than I am in terms of being patient and waiting for stuff. And I suppose the way my system deals with it, as I mentioned, is I, I have that category of trades which go from high time frame to low time frame FTA. That's sort of how I deal with it. Um, but it still necessitates the use of high time frame levels. If the market's in between or whatever, the, the opportunities are much, much more limited, generally. Again, this comes with some exceptions. Like if we get a break of a high time frame level and the market starts to consolidate, right? And I get a setup within the consolidation, I can trade within this. So technically the trade at the level is here, but I can trade within like post after the level if it's appropriate. So that's not entirely accurate this model, but the trade idea, I suppose, is still always hinged on a high time frame level. Whether I'm doing business slightly above, below it, within a consolidation or on a retest, etc., that's kind of the, the finer stuff. Okay, I think that's all we've got time for. Certainly a lot of stuff that we've talked about. Oh, I suppose the final thing, I've got the s and I've got resistance level at 3504. Uh, and that's quite simply the highest weekly close here. So that's what I've got as resistance. And then support 3380, 3302, 3220s. Uh, ends up being kind of this candle here. And support sort of the breakout level around 3400s. Don't know if that matters or means anything to anyone. <laughs> um, but that's the that's the S&P chart. If anyone cares about the levels, that's that's what they are.
Right, that's all I've got for now. Some final notes. Thank you to Bybit for sponsoring Technical Roundup. We're very grateful for their support. Make sure to check them out via the links in the description below and show them some love if you see them walking past on the street. Subscribe for the newsletter. Technical Roundup comes out every Tuesday at 8 p.m. UTC. So that's tomorrow uh, in about 12 hours, actually. Sorry, that's not true at all. In exactly 24 hours or slightly over. So be sure to be there for that. We've also got thumbnails and other cool stuff coming for the channel. I know it doesn't sound like much, but, you know, reinvesting, obviously, large commitment. So we've got pretty thumbnails, but also I want to start making non-live stream content for the channel as well. So if you have any suggestions, make sure to leave a comment on the video itself. Like it if you haven't already. And we are almost at 11k subs, so any support on that front would be hugely appreciated. And it is an honor and a privilege to talk with you every Monday. I look forward to the next Monday session. You will see me next on Friday and in writing form on tomorrow. On tomorrow. That's all I've got. Thank you very much for your attention as always. Hope you've had a productive weekend, an excellent start to the week. Yada yada. Duck is on Wednesday and take care. Goodbye.